What is up, Sideways fam? Welcome back to the channel. We got a Mark II Supra in this shop. I'm super excited about this one. This one's actually like making some jam. She's doing about 700 horsepower right now. They just got a brand new fresh engine in this thing. Uh, and they're ready to retune it and turn it up and crank it up. Or at least have the car last longer than it did last time from the shop that messed with it uh, and kind of messed everything up in the first place. So he's been working on it himself now for a few years, trying to get everything all buttoned up. I'm gonna go through a few super, super cool things with this thing, because this thing is total race car for uh, old, old Celica Supra or MK2 Supra old. This is just pretty cool to see somebody actually try to go ham with these things. So pretty cool, dude. let's get right into it. So really quickly, as you can see, He's got some nice wheels on it. Got some wheelwood brakes, which is awesome. Uh, he's got a, a five lug conversion, which is kind of interesting. I'll have to ask him about that and what he did to do that. Got the LED headlight conversion. It's hood exit. Uh, I guess uh, he had it over at a, a different shop and it just wasn't, like never really ended up running right. So pretty cool. He's got uh, his tranny set up in here. Probably I'm assuming it's an R54 NRG bucket seat fuel cell, batteries in the back right here, every gauge in the world by AEM, which is gonna have to get ditched because you know that we don't do that. We wanna get the wiring all set up the right way. He should really just have a cam display right here and be good to go. But I mean, that's all simple to modify. Um, you know, he's got his super, super crazy wide Mickey Thompson, 315, 35, 17s on this thing, you guys. Holy crap, you know what I mean? And uh, got a super, super cool little, I guess, uh, probably had to make that wide body bigger. So that's where you put that little fender flare on in the rear. Um, and underneath the car, which I was talking to him about before, uh, he's got a fuel issue, which is probably has a lot to do with this. But in the back, back here, he's done a rear end modification out of, out of, out of like some kind of pickup truck to hold around 700 horsepower, he said. That's been holding up pretty decent. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what, what the dyno numbers were last time to justify that, but I know that he's gone ahead and put a different rear, a different uh, internal one. This is supposed to be stronger, um, and uh, got it all to retrofit with everything. So I'll have to get into that later with him and see what was all going on. But you're gonna see there's a lot of wiring problems and wiring things for this thing. Uh, it's on Haltech 2500, from my understanding. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get it off the truck and trailer right now, and. Uh, Kind of go through it all with him real quick so we can figure out what we got to do to get this thing going okay. so we just got the car inside right now and i'm going to go ahead and uh go over some of the stuff since the customer's gone now so i guess they sold him a haltech 2000 which is cool uh elite's a great computer uh just in general uh on a haltech wiring harness so you can order this from haltech it's kind of like a universal system you can see right here it's got the part number. So a lot of people will just do it like this because they have their own kit. I know AEM has something like that similar as well. And then uh, they have this like fuse box uh, set up here that a lot of people run in their cars for like their race car stuff because they're running um, like, like this, pretty gutted on the inside with a bunch of stuff. So you'll have like a whole nother, you know, relay system in here with all your stuff if you wanna, however you wanna wire everything up to work in the car. So that's pretty cool um definitely never used that before uh and the wiring's all ran up into the bay but what i really really wanted to show you guys right now is uh besides like you know the super jdm super cool part about the whole save the dragon sell like a super thing is uh his uh engine setup in here so let me get the hood situated real fast you can look at all this crazy right now and uh let's, let me see if i can get you kind of walk through and all this stuff so walking through some of this stuff he's got uh the LQ coil packs with the coil pack bracket. I've never seen that bracket before, but pretty cool. We got the NP boosted uh, uh, intake manifold up here with the custom throttle cable. And uh, you know, all the fab stuff is actually pretty legit. He's got vibrant clamps. He's got like a big old, big old bad boy intercooler. It's like a six inch core on this thing. And uh, I mean, he's got a Garrett turbo on this thing too. That's water cooled, but running the future fab manifold with twin wastegates and got the whole hood dump situation going on. Uh, I already told him I was gonna make this video. He was pretty stoked about it. it didn't really show any uh, any uh, upsetting anything about this, but the wiring, I don't know why it was just kind of set up like this, but it's just a huge mess. I don't really understand um, why they would set it up like this, but um, I got his uh, intake air temperature sensor on the wrong side of the intake, which is kind of not supposed to be on that side. It's supposed to be on this side, dude. Like uh, that's gonna give you a false reading. So we can't do that. Um, just super, I mean, Chinese fans on this thing that he says that work super, super good, but I mean, they're falling off and the wiring's about to get hit by here. Um, the hosings that he's using for the, uh, catch can is just like super rock hard. It's all on some push lock fitting stuff and it's not even kind of facing the right way. The catch can's fastened with, uh, some kind of like Home Depot, uh, aluminum bracket. So, I mean, 
that's kind of messy in my opinion. I don't really know if I like that or not. Um, and then uh, the water cool lines, I mean, he's running heater, heater hose, you know, for this stuff. So, I mean, I guess he was saying that the rear housing was getting too hot and melting his turbo blanket, um, running just oil to the turbo. So I don't know, um, you know, not running an idler control valve, that's fine. There's a couple, bunch of other kind of crazy janky that's in this thing too. Um, if you look at the oil line system that he has for his cooler, it's a Gretty oil, it's a Gretty oil adapter, so that's pretty cool. But he's got his oil pressure sensor for his gauge, uh, you know, tied into another T that's going into another sensor uh, that's now going to his ECU, and then it's aftermarket gauge. The water temp sensor just in a hose right here, which is just a no-no. Um, and I mean the OEM gauge one in here too. Pretty cool because someone actually took the time to go ahead and like do all the fab on this stuff, like just like super, super nice and make it all super right. Um, so that's pretty cool. I mean, I'm definitely happy about that. Um, going back to the fuel system stuff. So he's running an AEM regulator right here. I think part of the issue he's having for a startup and just running uh, this pressure sensor right here usually is used for a map sensor. Um, they do use them for, for fluid sensors as well, but it's one of those things where like he's running a lot of these 50 PSI or 150 PSI brass sensors that we typically use for our oil pressure and our fuel pressure sensors. And then usually use the stainless for the map sensor because that's the one that you're gonna wanna not have to change because you usually put it in the bottom of the intake manifold right here. Um, so kind of interesting, you know, I'm not, I'm not really sure, you know, he said that he didn't change anything and that the car uh, ran uh with all this stuff in it you know and ran pretty good so i mean i don't i'm not really sure what the situation is i just know like you know overflow tanks in there and there's just kind of there really is just stuff everywhere so i'm excited about this but i mean for the work that's going to be coming up i'm definitely kind of not excited about this um so i mean i don't know so this is actually a 1.5 jz um that's uh that's in here right now it's a built block he says with cp nine to five compression pistons uh a boost line rods which is like the one that everybody pretty much uses for everything and i don't know it's all done to the head with a uh with, with cams or valve springs or retainers or whatever i'll have to ask him about that later maybe we'll just pull the valve covers and check for ourselves. um so not quite sure kind of how we're gonna do this but we're gonna clean everything up we're gonna make this thing look like a proper sideways car and kind of just trying to figure out what we're going to do to get this all right so i mean definitely some you know super race car setup the five lug and, and and the brakes and the tires and all the other stuff is just like super crazy so i mean he's obviously trying to make some jam in this thing the battery situation i'm not too fond about either i mean apparently he's just running this little relay down here this uh to uh his booster pump is kind of like what he's doing and he's running it through the freaking hole back here for the seat belts and uh just what a mess man like i just i really wish that if if, if you were going to spend this kind of money on this kind of stuff you'd think you'd you probably want to spend all the money you know on making it look decent as well but i mean is it you know to each is your own you guys so let me go ahead and get in the trunk real quick and show you what's up back there real quick as well so double checked in here to see what transit is and we got an rm54 you can see the grommets on it mark 3 rm54 that they put in this he said it's a stock rm54 with a triple disc uh os gicken uh clutch so that's pretty cool got the speed daddy usa uh like probably 20 gallon or 25 gallon tank he's got back here in the back just kind of bracketed in and that's cool dude like it's gonna totally do what it needs to do um and uh you can see the lines back here that are getting ran to the actual fuel cell I can get you a, a little bit of a non-glare, but yeah, running a 10 to a six, and then there's no breather on the tank as well. Uh, he's got his return line coming back in from the top up here, which is, I mean, that's fine, um, but there's no breather. So the tank is probably pressurizing too. That's no good. So um, just wanted to make a quick little video on the car because this is super dope. Like not very many people do this kind of stuff. Don't take it as I'm just sitting here talking shit and making a huge, you know like just sitting here blasting them on the internet i'm not blasting them i'm just going over the stuff that we're going to be changing and fixing because you know we all have our uh expectations of what what we're trying to give the customer customer has his expectation of what he's going to want to get out of us as well and uh, overall i'm just stoked to have another mark ii in the crew and to get one more person to build a dope ass car so um let me know what you guys think about this build uh 
you know, any kind of questions or things that, about what he did and, you know, like whatever, go ahead and bring it up to me. Uh, and hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time, guys. Peace.